but I'd love to hear more about the rest of the weekend and what you're because you have a you have a, a quite a grand objective, quite a major objective here. Please tell me more about. Well, it. Graham, you know the two things that I have done primarily to earn my keep in the world is build things, and then second, but a close second is I've been a teacher. You know, organizing classes. Yeah. I, for 15 years, I organized classes for young people between the ages of nine and 17 uh, that were primarily being homeschooled and who were not part of the public school system. So I organized classes for them. And I had this, it was a very revelatory experience for me to work mm -hmm. with young people and to see that young people outside the public educational system had a very demonstrably different attitude and a, a, uh, approach to learning and, yeah. Yeah. and relationships among their families and their, their outlook on, on the world at large. So there was yeah. that. And then of course I've done lectures and classes and things for adults since, since the 1980s, you know, in, in the geometry and stuff that I do yeah. and giving lectures, um, on the subjects that really interest me and you as well. Yeah. Um, I think it's I think it's very important work that you're doing there, and I saw that that little clip that you did uh, that, the, about your about your teaching and about the way that the education system, as it's presently structured, just forces the alert, active minds of young people into a very narrow channel, yeah. uh, and a very hierarchical and dominator kind of kind of channel instead of allowing those brilliant minds. I mean, I'm I'm lucky enough now to be a grandfather of no less than seven grandchildren. But yes, we were saying about the, um, in fact, is this kind of thing that helps to educate people and get their minds working, isn't it? Yes. We, we were saying about the education system and the way that presently the education system in America and in Britain, and in fact, pretty much all over the world is so structured that instead of developing and nurturing those, those brilliant young minds, I was mentioning that I have seven, seven grandchildren. And what I'm noticing with these kids, these very young kids, they come into the world already with personalities, you mm -hmm, know, and, mm -hmm. and the curiosity is just so intense. And it's that curiosity, which the education system shuts down. Yeah. And so it's, it's fantastic that you're taking this initiative and, and, you know, teaching in a different way to stimulate and encourage and nurture curiosity. Well, let me, let me tell you this, you know, I went on, was on Joe Rogan in, um, what was it? Six or eight yeah. weeks ago, I made my sixth so appearance episode. on this. Excellent well, episode. Know, Good. Okay. Well, I ended by kind of just kind of going off on a rant for 20 minutes about <laughs> the we... situation. And I have gotten over 500 emails now wow. from people who are like instantly responding to that yeah. saying, yeah. Yeah. you know, what can we do to help? You know, I've, I've had at least a dozen people now come forward and say, I'm ready to drop a hundred thousand dollars on this project. Fantastic. It, that's it what, is that's fantastic. what was needed. Yeah. 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 So uh, it really, I, I was shocked by the response, but it told me that, that, that there really is a need for something like this. And a lot of people are feeling it, that there has to be some kind of an alternative. There's a huge need for it. So you're going to be previewing some of this in, in the weekend. Yes. At yeah. Yes. yeah. In fact, you're doing two weekends, if I understand correctly. The one I'm involved in is the weekend of 15th, 16th, 17th. I'm, I'm there specifically on the 17th. Right. right, you're doing a weekend after that as well. Yeah, Robert pressured me into it. <laughs> He's good at that. Well, yeah, I'm going to be out there. So then, in between, you know, we've got three days of field trips planned, yeah. which are going to be kind of fun and exciting. I don't know, you might. Think Can so. I say to anybody who's listening, a field trip with Randall is an incredible privilege. I have had the opportunity to do a major, major field trip up in the Channel Scablands with Randall, and Randall and I are going to be doing another field trip up there fairly soon. And a field trip with Randall is an experience of a lifetime. You are traveling with a man who has walked the walk, boots on the ground for years, really, really knows his stuff and communicates it brilliantly. So those field trips are going to be fantastic. Well, thanks for the uh, vote of confidence. Graham, I appreciate it. It's a vote of confidence lot. based on based on my personal experience. You well, taught me so much on our journey through the Scablands, just so much. It was amazing. Yeah, I still look back at that. That's kind of like a, a a major that week and a half that we spent there, traveling from Portland to Minneapolis, actually. <laughs> um, and and you know what, our trip culminated by going to those potholes up in the Saint Croix River, and Absolutely. that was before I had connected that 
those potholes specifically with the work of uh, uh, Teller, Teller, right. um, James, who's Teller, who's doing the work up there. Yeah. Who, yeah who's dated, yeah. who dated the flooding up there precisely to the younger Dryas. Right. That's, that's, that's actually incredibly important. Since that's incredibly important. And it, and it, you know, it, it, it's interesting about the dating that my, my first dating that I had ever read on the precise dating on the right. Missoula floods was D uh, Donald Mullineau, um, and colleagues that came out in 1978 and yeah. they data did a contextual dating based upon Mount St. Helens set as mm -hmm. Tephra that was sandwiched in between back flood layers. And mm -hmm. they dated that to 13,000, just over 13,000 years, plus or minus, if I remember right, 300 years, which of course yeah. completely and perfectly brackets the Younger Dryas. Brackets that, the beginning of the Younger Dryas perfectly, yeah. Yes. Now that that dominated up until the Beryllium 10 numbers that Alan, which is at what Alan cited based on 15,500 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I'm not convinced by the beryllium-10 numbers because, you know, beryllium-10 is a isotope. It's formed by spallation of oxygen and nitrogen molecules in the atmosphere by cosmic ray bombardment. And there's mm -hmm. also what they call the uh, inheritance effect, that it, mm -hmm. can, it can bias something, making a date look older than it actually is. My yeah. thought, and I haven't had time to fully research this yet, but you know, we have to consider that that the younger driest boundary, the lower younger driest boundary, would have been very unusual conditions. Yes. And we know from Tunguska and other studies that a major bolide impact can strip away ozone, which is part of the yeah. protective layer, allowing more cosmic rays to um, penetrate to the lower atmosphere, causing more spallation, hence more creation of beryllium-10. So the, what, that may or may not be relevant to that date, but that's well, the, something I mean, that, the bottom line is that we have a huge mystery surrounding the Channel Scablands. I mean, we when you, you took me through those Channel Scablands, I have never seen such spectacular and extraordinary landscapes in my life. And it's <laughs> clearly, I mean, nobody disputes this, that those landscapes are cut by absolutely humongous floods uh, and and uh while the mainstream tries to disconnect those floods from the younger dryas events i'm i'm convinced with you that the younger dryas was intimately involved in those flooding events yeah i've struggled with trying to explain to myself okay if it was preceding younger dryas by a couple of thousand years then you can't just say well it happened you know, no. something had to have caused it. Exactly, exactly. It's so on, on, on that enormous scale, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, so, so I think that um, we, it's, it's. This is where I think you and I are are useful in a way because because we don't just buy into everything that the mainstream says. Mm -hmm. We we look at it carefully from a, from a reasoned and thoroughly researched point of view and come to our own conclusions. And then we offer those conclusions to those who, who want to know about them. And it, I think it, it, it enhances public discourse on this matter. Uh, the academics don't like radicals like you and me. Uh, they would prefer that we, they could just sweep us under the carpet. But actually, I think we play a really important role in creating a genuine dialogue over these issues rather than just a one-sided one -sided thing. I'm finding the latest technique of archaeologists to deal with me is to just ban me, ban me from going to key sites that I need to go to in order to work. I mean, that is plain, straightforward censorship by any other name. They're behaving like the Russian government, you know, uh, just, just uh, censoring any information that they don't like. Uh, and so we have to keep on fighting the good fight. Yeah, uh I don't see there's any other choice, but, uh, Hey, I'm having fun doing it. So me too, me too. <laughs> so. And we'll have, we'll have fun on the upcoming, upcoming weekend. And I think it's going to be a great, a great weekend for the audience to share in. And I'm pleased we're going to have panel discussions and Q and a so that everybody can get involved in this. Yeah. And, uh, the place we're staying, uh, Poco Diablo, that's going to be a very, a real nice place to, to be holding the event. So a real I've nice place is always welcome. Yeah. Uh, the the Easter weekends at Creative Life Center, Randall. Uh, oh. The following weekend is Earth Day weekend. That's at Poco Diablo. Oh, okay. Well, Creative Life Center is nice too. 
Yeah, you you've both yeah. been there before. Yeah, yeah I've, talked, I've talked there before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We just good. Graham. I guess we just wouldn't be able to take up a round of golf then. <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> I guess not. Okay. Um, on the trips, on the mid trips that Randa was talking about, midweek trips, road trips. We're going to be with Bertram, um, who you had met with from Hopi. Indeed. And yep. we're going to go. He's going to take us to Prophecy Rock and okay. Zawa Park. And, and then also, Randall, we'll, we'll go to Rock Art Ranch the following day. You remember Brantley? They have some patina and petroglyphs dated back to 9,500 years. Mm -hmm. uh, Graham's been there with Gary David. Mm -hmm. And that will wrap up that road trip. We'll do some sites on the way back. Uh, but also that following weekend, Bertram and Cleve will come on Earth Day weekend for those who can't make it Easter. They're going to be talking about the blue corn, uh, the wow. seeds of life, as they call it. And they're going to be telling the mythologies behind the corn, but also the mythologies about these different catastrophic periods of time um that they have in their lore these mythologies are incredibly important and i, and mm -hmm. I often say because they're the only memories we have mm -hmm. of the time that otherwise our species has forgotten they're the only memories we have and, and they're precious they're a precious resource and again unfortunately mainstream archaeology tends to ignore them and think that it's just about ancient fantasies when in fact they are documents they are the they are the documents that have survived uh, from the time when we got hit on the head and suffered from a major episode of amnesia. Yeah, I mean, it was just that point. I wanted to reiterate the point that, that Graham made and that they are yeah. really, in a way, their memories of, of their testimonials yeah. that have been handed down um, incredibly long periods of time Yeah, that um, are, to me, as important almost as the hard science that's yeah. going on today in that's trying to piece together all of the elements of these, of this mystery. And I still think of it. I mean, we're still a long way from uh, sorting everything out that happened. A but, very long way. Yes. But, but you know, we, I, have I, begun. we have what? We have begun. We have begun. Yes. And what's been encouraging to me, Graham, is that, and this is largely due to your work, people coming sent me emails i've seen posts and i've gotten prim primarily emails to me younger people saying well I've, I've watched you on joe rogan i've been looking at your podcast i've read graham hancock's book books i've decided i want to go be a geologist i'm going into geology and yes. i think you're right yes. yeah exactly. this is another very important development which is the younger the younger generation of young adults yeah. who are now forming the first the first intake in archaeology and in geology are making that intake with a whole new set of ideas. They're yeah. not stuck in the old in the old paradigm. And I am en enormously encouraged as I travel around by meeting the occasional young archaeologist who actually is open-minded. And it's 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 becoming more and more of a trend. Yeah, and I think the 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 establishment is trying even more to you know bring down the big guns to in inculcate oh, yeah. their paradigm into yeah, the absolutely. as a reaction to the fact yeah. that well, we got to make sure that we nip this kind of heresy in the bud and yeah. not see a whole generation of young archaeologists or geologists go off chasing these you know these fantasies or whatever that's but, the, that's the i don't think it's going to work no it's not going to work it's, it's definitely it's definitely not going to work you cannot suppress curiosity forever that's right that's right yeah. so so it's going to be fun and i guess i'll be seeing you in um in washington yeah, we're going to be meeting before before Sedona, and I'm really looking forward to that. And then we'll meet again in in Sedona. Fantastic! Yeah. Looking forward to it all together. It's going to be a really great event. Yeah. And uh, Randall, I'm really looking forward to our work together up in the in the Scablands, and and then we'll make a very strong series of presentations together. <laughs>